This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. This is Satan's world, filled with corruption, lies, misrepresentations, false standards, values, and philosophies. And in this program, I want to give you a few examples of news articles which were published just this week to show you how corrupt and evil this ungodly world has become. But at the end of the program, I also want to give you some good news. By the way, all the articles I'm going to quote from are published in our weekly update. And if you are not already a subscriber of our weekly update, which is of course to be given out free of charge, please do so because every week we are giving you valuable information you need to know. And I dare to say you will not find the information which we present to you in that fashion anywhere else. But today I'd like to talk about the scandal to begin with, the scandal regarding the soccer world, which is of course the world's most popular sport. It's called football in every other country but the United States. And of course I'm talking about the FIFA scandal. Now FIFA, if you didn't know that, is an acronym for football is for all, FIFA. Football is for all. And unfortunately, it's very true because apparently it's also for unscrupulous and corrupt functionaries in that organization. You've probably heard that the FBI is investigating some very high ranking functionaries, including the longtime president, the Swiss person Sepp Blatter, who was reelected in spite of the scandal. But then, of course, he wisely decided to resign right away. The tragic news is that the corrupt scandal in FIFA has been known for quite a while. And very popular and famous soccer or football players like Britain's Dave Beckham or also Germany's Kaiser Franz Beckenbauer have pointed that out, especially when it came to deciding as to where the world competition would take place, the World Cup. But of course, as a consequence, FIFA severely punished Beckenbauer and ordered him that he was not allowed to even attend several soccer games for a period of time. It is horrible to say that a sport like this one has become a morass of sinful and corrupt conduct, in part due to scrupulous or unscrupulous functionaries. But we also dare to say that that is not limited to just the world of soccer. I believe it is true in just about every other sport and the more popular a sport gets, the more corrupt it will become. Turning now to the political field, we all should know that of course corruption and lies are commonplace in politics. I want to give you a few examples which were published this week and reported about. Of course, first I want to talk about the NSA data collection program. And you all know that the Patriot Act has expired, but a new law has been enacted already, which is not all that much sim uh, different, I should say, from the Patriot Act. Very similar, in fact. But the claim has been made that the Patriot Act has prevented terror attacks. And there's not a single shred of evidence that that claim is correct. Not a single shred of evidence. And the Republican and presidential candidate Rand Paul, in response to that new law which has been enacted this week, commented on June 3 that the American government only admits to its unconstitutional actions when those have been clearly revealed, after having repeatedly denied and lied about their conduct. And popular TV evangelist and political commentator Pat Robertson in his TV show, 700 Club, made some very strong comments on June 3 to the effect that he said, I have never imagined or I couldn't have imagined that we would ever live in a country which is ruled by big brother governmental activities, where civil liberties and freedoms of our citizens are being taken away on a constant basis. But then there are politicians, especially those from the right, from the Republican field, denying that saying, oh no, civil liberties and freedoms have ever been violated during the Patriot Act concept. Well, of course, lies 
and misrepresentations are not limited to just one party. I'd like to read to you from an article which was published by Breitbart on June 1, saying that while President Barack Obama was answering questions at a town hall on Monday, he said his administration has restored the United States as the most respected country on earth. Do I really have to comment on that? You know, either he wasn't serious. If he was serious, then as some commentators have asked, on what planet does the president live? Couldn't be on this planet. Because let me just make it very clear, the reputation of the United States of America in the world is mocked. It has never been as bad as it is today. It's a totally, completely wrong and false statement. But there's also incredible false accusation in other areas. And I'd like to give you an example now, which was reported in an article published on June 3 by the Times of Israel. And quite frankly, it's a lengthy article. I just want to give you the first paragraph. It says, An Islamic preacher on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem claimed that the Nazis burned the Jews of Europe during the Holocaust because they had been kidnapping children to use their blood in Passover bread. He also claimed that Jews worship Satan plotted the 9-11 attacks and controlled the Freemasons who sacrificed their wives and children in secret ceremonies. Now these horrible and false and anti-Semitic accusations are so ridiculous, but unfortunately gullible people and fanatics, and I call them brain dead, are more than anxious and eager to believe them. And based on their false belief are willing to do some horrible acts. And it shouldn't surprise us that in response, some Christians and some Jews burn the Quran or conduct cartoon contests where Muhammad is being drawn and ridiculed. And that in turn leads to more violence and it leads to more murder and attempted murder. Listen to this article by Newsmax dated June 3. A man shot and killed by police in Boston on Tuesday was allegedly conspiring with another man to behead police officers and kill the Jewish-American activist Pamela Geller, who had recently organized a Muhammad cartoon competition that was attacked in Texas. Now let's go to another example of delusion, which was of course reported on this week, and you've all heard it, I'm sure. Former Olympian Bruce Jenner is now Caitlyn Jenner. And to prove that point, a picture of his slash her new look was published on the cover of Vanity Fair magazine. The name already is interesting, Vanity. All right, The Independent wrote on June 4 that Jenner's transition has been celebrated across the world. While the cover has been praised as groundbreaking and an important moment for transgender rights and visibility. Well, not everybody would agree. Here's an article by Breitbart dated June 3. The notion that gender is completely fluid, that a man can become a woman and a woman can become a man, rests on the redefinition of maleness and femaleness into nothingness. A male cannot magically become a female simply by injecting estrogen, reshaping the jawline, or inserting silicon beneath the skin of the chest. Being a female is more than injections and plastic surgery. But those who refuse to submit to the delusions of the mentally ill must be denounced as intolerant and unscientific. Now, why would the author refer to delusions of the mentally ill? Well, because they also published another article the same day saying that on Wednesday, the Wall Street Journal, they promoted a June 2014 op-ed by Dr. Paul McHugh, former psychiatrist-in-chief at Johns Hopkins University or hospital, which argues that transgender identity is a mental illness and should not be treated with surgery, which can cause more harm than good. And you also pointed out that a disproportionate amount of transgender people who have 
done surgery have been committing suicide. Now, the standards and the values of this world, which is ruled by Satan the devil, let me remind you of that, are in complete and total contradiction to what the Bible says, because the Bible strongly condemns the concept that through surgery a man can become a woman or a woman can become a man. But is it of any surprise then that even in the religious field now, people are talking about God as a she? And I'm talking about the Christian religion. Now, that's actually very true that that is what's happening. The Telegraph wrote on May 31. Support is growing within the Church of England to rewrite its official liturgy to refer to God as female following the selection of the first woman bishop or the first women bishops. Growing numbers of priests already insert words such as she and mother informally into traditional service texts as part of a move to make the language of worship more inclusive. Well, let me just say that to have women as ministers, as bishops, is already a clear violation of biblical standards. The Bible clearly prohibits that. But then to heap insult and injury, to refer to God as a she, only shows the abominable direction these liberalism and these liberal ideas are going to. And there is really no surprise then that many British people have lost complete interest in the Christian religion today as taught by the Church of England, because after all, the Church of England has lost all standards, have thrown out biblical foundational concepts and have replaced them with liberal ideas, which are ungodly. And that brings me to the last example I want to give to you today. And this has to do again with same-sex marriages, but it refers to a development now in Germany, which is quite interesting. The local wrote on June 3, Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer of Chancellor Angela Merkel's conservative Christian Democratic Union Party, the CDU, told the Saarbrücker Zeitung that she was worried about the consequences of changing the definition of marriage currently narrowly defined as being between a man and a woman in the German constitution. If we open up this definition to become a long-term responsible partnership between two adults, then other demands cannot be ruled out, such as a marriage between close relatives, like brother and sister, or between more than two people, like polygamy, she said. And she also said that a mother and a father pairing was the best way of raising a child. Now, you can only imagine, can't you, what the reaction of the liberals has been. Social Democratic Party, SPD, politicians were quick to respond to Kram Karrenbauer with Secretary General Yasmin Fahimi calling it a new law for the debate on marriage for all. This is a blow in the face of hundreds of thousands of same-sex partnerships who stand up for one another and take on responsibilities, said Fahimi. Of course, the SPD is the partner in that grand coalition they have with the CDU. Not same-sex partner, but partner. But it's also a very unnatural union. Now, the... SPD were joined by Free Democratic Party FDP Secretary General Nicola Baer, who called Kramp Karrenbauer's words shameless. She is deeply insulting homosexuals. I call on her to apologize for going off the rails. I don't know where there was any deep insult regarding homosexuals, but it shows again the aggressive way in which the liberals try to silence, defame, and of course, in a sense, intimidate those who do not support their liberal, and I might say ungodly, agenda. These were just a few examples to show you to what this world has come. No wonder that God tells us, come out of her, my people, that you are not going to participate in their sins and that you do not participate in their plagues, which are going to be poured out 
on this world very soon. But the good news is that Jesus Christ will return, and perhaps even much sooner than many think, to put an end to this nonsense. We have a free booklet prepared for your asking, human suffering, why and how much longer? Human suffering, why and how much longer? And to answer the second part of that question, not much longer. So please ask for a free booklet, a free copy of that booklet. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our weekly updates. Because, as I said, you need that information. And this booklet on human suffering, why and how much longer, will give you great hope, great encouragement. Because you will learn that this evil, rotten world, with all its lies, misrepresentations, and wrong standards ruled by Satan the devil will come to an end, and that very soon. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.